13 Vendamia Year 4 is the name given to a battle between the French revolutionary troops and royalist forces in the streets of Paris. The battle was largely responsible for the rapid advancement of Republican General Napoleon Bonaparte's career. Background The social reforms of the French Revolution had been well received by the majority of the populace of France. But the revolution's strongly anti-Catholic stance had created anti-Republican sympathies in many Roman Catholics. In March 1793, this sentiment boiled over into an armed insurrection in the fiercely Catholic Vendée region of western France. A rebel army titled ARME QT Catholique Royal now proved to be a thorn in the side of the revolutionary government in Paris. Under leaders such as François de Cherit de la Contrée and Louis Delbay, the rebels were known as Chouans, a title which comes from early royalist leader John Cotterow's nickname Jean Chouan. He was known for his perfect imitation of an owl's cry, a noise which had become the rallying cry of the insurgents of Vendée. The ARME QT Catholique Royal quickly garnered British support and got off to a promising start, severely defeating several revolutionary armies. The Revolutionary Committee of Public Safety ordered General Jean Baptiste Carrier to pacify the region, and over several months Carrier ruthlessly decimated the populace of the Vendée. The local population dubbed Carrier's forces the Colonists Infernalists. On the 22nd of December 1793, the Chuan Rebellion subsided following a major defeat of the Battle of Savanay. Following the Ninth Thermidor, those Chouans willing to lay down arms were granted amnesty by the Reformed National Convention. The Chouans responded by attacking the Republican-held town of Guemane on 29 January 1795. The convention immediately ordered General Hoche to proceed to the Vendée and force the Chouans to agree to a cessation of hostilities. Hoche quickly defeated the Chouan army and on 17 February François de Cherot de la Contre signed a very generous peace settlement. A small contingent of royalists under the command of General Stofflet and the fanatical Abbé Bernier refused to accept the peace settlement and continued to offer resistance to Hoche's army. They were supported by the British in the form of 4,000 emigres, 80,000 muskets, and 80 cannon, along with food, clothing, and even a large quantity of counterfeit assignates. This large force was placed under the command of emigre generals Poussai and Hamili. Hearing of this, the Cherit de la Contre broke the peace agreement and reopened hostilities. On 26 June, the emigre force landed at Karnak. Hermili quickly advanced on Ore before engaging and being defeated by Hoche and Vans. By early July, Hemli had been forced out of Ore and was besieged in the fortress of Pentheva. This meant that the entire insurgent army was now trapped on the Quibrian Peninsula. On 15 July, an additional emigre division arrived to bolster the defence, under the command of General Sombroy, but Hermili was killed in action on 16 July. By the 20th, the fortress had fallen and Hoche swiftly advanced down the peninsula, defeating the hopelessly trapped Hemigre army. Only General Poussai and a small force were able to escape with the British fleet. The remainder were killed in action, taken prisoner, or executed. Despite the failure of the Emigre army, the Cherit de la Contre continued to offer resistance. In early September, a popular revolt broke out in the area around Dro, but it was defeated in battle at Nonancourt. The Cherit de la Contre himself suffered a major defeat at Saint Cyr on 25 September. Despite this, the Comte d'Artois landed at Isle d'Yeu with 1,000 émigrés and 2,000 British troops. Bolstered by this force, the Royalist troops began marching on Paris in early October 1795. The arrival of the Comte d'Artois excited the Jeunesse Doré Royalist supporters in the Lapelletier section of the capital, and they began demonstrations in the form of felling liberty trees and trampling tricolor cockades. Perhaps more disturbing, rumours began to circulate regarding the likely defection of the entire Paris National Guard, Vendémiaire. 
The convention quickly realized that it was in severe danger, and that an enemy force was on French soil. Indeed, the uprising in Paris meant that there was now an enemy force within the capital itself. The convention declared its intention to remain in their meeting rooms until the crisis was resolved. It called for the formation of three battalions of patriots to be raised from the Jacobin military staff dismissed after 9 Thermidor. General Baron de Menau was given command of the defense of the capital, but he was severely outnumbered with only 5,000 troops on hand to resist the 30,000-man royalist army. On 12 Vendamia, the National Guard arrived in La Pelletier in an attempt to put down the unrest. The military committee of the sections of the capital under the command of Richard de Savigny announced that the decrees of the convention were no longer recognized. General Danakin took command of the National Guard in the La Pelletier section. The convention ordered men out to advance into La Pelletier, to disarm the entire area, and to close Danakin's headquarters. Generals de Spears and Verdier were sent to Menau to assist him. Menau divided his force into three columns and planned an advance into La Pelletier on the evening of 12 Vendamia. When the advance was set to begin, de Spears reported that he was unwell and unable to proceed, and Verdier refused to advance. Menau timidly advanced towards the royalist force, inviting the rebels to discuss terms of their dispersal. He withdrew after receiving the insurgents' promise to disarm. The La Pelletier section, seeing this as a sign of weakness on the part of the convention, called upon the other sections of Paris to rise up. Menau realized his mistake, and launched a cavalry attack down the Rue du Faubourg at Montmartre, temporarily clearing the area of royalists. The convention dismissed Menau from the command and ordered Paul Barris to take over the defense of the convention. A whiff of grape shot. Young General Napoleon Bonaparte was aware of the commotion, and he arrived at the convention around this time to find out what was happening. He was quickly ordered to join Barras forces mustering for the defense of the Republic. Bonaparte accepted, but only on the condition that he was granted complete freedom of movement. At 1 a.m. on 13 Vendamia, Bonaparte overrode Barras, who was content to let him do as he wished. Bonaparte ordered Joachim Murat, a Sioux lieutenant in the 12-VME Regiment de Chasseurs à Cheval, to ride to the Plain of Sablons and to return with the 40 cannons which Menau had indicated were located there. Murat's squadron retrieved the cannon before the Royalists arrived and Bonaparte organized their arrangement placing them in commanding areas with effective fields of fire. At 5 a.m., a probing attack by the Royalist forces was repulsed. Five hours later, the major Royalist assault began. The Republican forces were outnumbered by approximately 6 to 1, but they held their perimeter all the same. The cannons firing grape shot into the massed Royalist forces. The Patriot battalions supporting the artillery also cut down the advancing royalist ranks. Bonaparte commanded throughout the two-hour engagement, and survived unscathed despite having his horse shot from under him. The effect of the grape shot and the volleys from the Patriot forces caused the royalist attack to waver. Bonaparte ordered a counter-attack led by Murat's squadron of chasseurs. At the close of the battle, around 300 royalists lay dead on the streets of Paris. Scottish philosopher and historian Thomas Carlyle later famously recorded that, on this occasion, Bonaparte gave his opponent a whiff of grape shot, and that, the thing we specifically call French Revolution is blown into space by it, that is, 13 Vendamia marks the ending of the French Revolution. Aftermath the defeat of the royalist insurrection extinguished the threat to the convention. Bonaparte became a national hero, and was quickly promoted to General de Division. Within five months, he was given command of the ARM Acuti d'Italia. The defeated royalists, in an effort to portray the Republican defense as a massacre, nicknamed Bonaparte General Vendamia, a title which he later claimed would be his first title of glory.